so far we have practiced nine accounting entries so we have a little bit of practice of double entry now it's time to see how these entries flow in the accounting books or accounting records of a company so if you look at the flow in these days modern times where mostly accounting is done through a computer system the flow would be like this it starts with the journal entry or the accounting entry itself this is summarized in a journal ledger which then transfers to the trial balance and then finally from the trial balance the financial statements are prepared so if you look at each one of them one by one with example let's start with journal entries so journal entries record all business transactions or double entries in chronological order so in old times when there were no computer systems imagine you are the accountant and you have a journal in which you are making sure that all of the accounting entries are being recorded so the best approach would be that you record each accounting entry or business transaction based on when they take place so that's why the journal entries were recorded in a chronological order that is based on the date and time so let's take a look at the example of our accounting entries that we just practiced so here I've summarized all of the entries we have done in Excel in a general journal format. So in our case, let's say the name of the company was Bold Bikes Company. So in the books of Bold Bikes Company for the month of January, you can see all of the entries are entered based on the date. So it starts with 1st of January when the owner of the business invested $30,000. So the entry was cash debit owner's equity credit and there is usually some description as well such as in this case to record initial contribution to equity and then all the other transactions that we just practiced are also entered so you can see on the same day he purchased furniture for cash then on 5th of january he purchased he made another purchase of furniture but this time on credit right then on the 10th of january he paid the amount payable for the furniture purchased on 15th of January, he paid rent. On 16th, he received dividend income. On the 20th of January, uh, there was a purchase of 10 bicycles. So it was recorded as inventory. On the 23rd January, there was a sale of five bicycles. So uh, the accountant recorded sales. And on the same day, 23rd January, he also recorded cost of sales. So these are about nine entries which are shown or which are entered in the general journal or this is the first step where the accounting entries are recorded in a sequence based on the date and time okay so the next step is the journal ledger now journal ledger is where all of these accounting transactions are summarized but this time they are based on the account number or jail account type let's take a look at that so the journal ledger will look something like this so as you can see each account will have an account number. So in the case of cash, for example, we have at the account number 1100. It may be different for each company, each organization. There's usually some logic applied when assigning account numbers. They're usually in a sequence. So for example, it may start with the current assets. So account numbers for current assets first, then non-current assets, then liabilities and equity. So in this case, we can see that for cash the account number is 1100 double one double zero and you can see all of the entries are summarized here so general ledger is a very good summary if you want to see what happened in the cash account right and this will give you a summary of all the transactions that took place so on the first of january cash was deposited and then there were these purchase of furnitures uh, payment of rent receiving of dividend on investment and then purchase of bicycles and finally sales of bicycles right the same way all the other accounts are also summarized there's usually a date period description debit and credit and final balance as well which is important so how is the final balance calculated as we are looking at an example of a company that just started brand new so the start of the month on the 1st of january before any transaction took place the balance in the cash account was zero the first entry increased the balance to thirty thousand the second entry which was a payment reduce the balance by 10,000 to 20,000 and similarly all the way down to at the end of the month the balance is $8,300 the same for inventory it started with nothing but then $5,000 worth of inventory was added half of that was sold so you have now the balance of 2,500 at the end of the month 
furniture was purchased twice ten thousand dollars we have twenty thousand dollar balance you can always see in the general ledger what amounts were debited and what amounts were credited the same for accounts payable we started there was a balance but it was already paid off during the month so the closing balance is zero owner's equity at start of the business thirty thousand dollars were deposited no change in there the owner's equity usually remains the same unless any changes are done by the owners of the business and then of course we have the sales we recorded the sales of four thousand dollars note that this is showing a negative balance usually negative balance denotes a credit balance and positive balance denotes a debit balance similarly dividend income of 500 cost of sales of 2500 and see it's a positive balance because it's a debit balance and then rent of 1200 dollars if you look at total debits and credits this is the sum of all of the entries that are done so far you will see that they're always equal okay now in this flow the third item would be the trial balance